Good morning, everyone. Oh, happy Saturday or whatever day that you are joining in on this, perhaps in recording. I'm looking forward to being in yoga class with everyone today. Good morning, Nancy. So I'm gonna give everybody, I like to open the yoga class. Good morning, Leah, good morning, Jenny. I like to open the class a little early so that we get an opportunity to just get settled. Good morning, Nicole. So today, um, being that you are on live this morning, today is all about subtle strength and meeting you on the mat where you are today. Thanks for saying hi. Say hello to everybody else if you like. You can pop open the chat bar. I know that we're all in our own little space today. I am actually creating some mood for myself this morning. I love these incense sticks. I get them at Daylin in Newmarket. And this one is cedar. And it's really subtle. And uh, super nice. So... I love to do this in yoga classes, but not everybody likes incense. So how lucky for you if you don't like them. <laughs> you don't have to <laughs> smell it. But I do love incense. The really good quality ones because they don't smell like perfume and junk. They're just a really nice subtle smell. This one, if you're just joining me now, is cedar. So I'm just gonna place this on the corner of my practice area. And I encourage you to do the same for yourself. Do the things that you love or do the things that make you feel the way you like to feel. Good morning, Kristen. And uh, whether that's incense or whether that's uh, essential oils or maybe that is a certain salt lamp or you open up the door like I have here and you're streaming in the sunshine. Um, perfect. Jenny, you invited your friend Kelly. Amazing. I love that. The more the merrier. So I've been hopping on a few, you know, um, workshops and podcasts for some people this week. And one of the questions I asked everybody and was really just asking myself, because I don't know what the answer is, was if you really feel like you're in this together. I know that's the hashtag that we see. Um, we're in this together. We're in this together. And we are in this together, that's my, this is my own personal opinion, but it doesn't always feel like you're in it with anybody else. So I say that because if there's moments when you feel alone or there's moments when you feel like you're not in this together, whether or not your house is full of other people or it's not, I just think it's really important to just honor this, that um, you get to feel whatever you feel. So today, as we go through our yoga practice, a couple things I just want to encourage you to do. One is to listen to the sound of your own voice. So although I'm in the background doing this, this is your opportunity to connect in and listen to what you need. So the only way we get heard on a yoga class in a yoga class is when we stop listening to our voice within. So it's sometimes great to feel stretch and opening, and there can be a line of tension in the body that we can respect and play with but it's your job to listen to what you need. Every single day that I step onto the yoga mat, I'm a different person. And so some days I, you know, reach my crown to the ground and my sitting bones to the sky and my legs lengthen. And other days I do that and I am literally in some sort of folded position. And that's the person that I work with on the mat that day. Some days it feels good to open my heart. Other days I wanna keep some of it to myself. So I want you to make sure that you honor your yoga practice today. A um, couple things, of course you, I would recommend you have a yoga mat because it just makes everything easier. Um, see if you can find something that you can use literally because you have blocks, which is also wonderful. But if you don't have blocks like most of us, just get something or a few things that you can use that will start to bring the ground closer to you. So something like I am equally, Equal height books will work just nicely. 
Um, I happen to have the luxury of having yoga blocks. Uh, what's nice about yoga blocks is you can do them on different heights, right? So sometimes you want to be lower because you have more flexibility and other times you want to be up on your fingertips because it helps you get out of your back body, right? So you can bend your knees, which I encourage you to do, but when you have the height of blocks and you can go up onto your fingertips, that allows you to bend your knees and to get the strain out of your lower back. We are going to be doing some lengthening of our legs on our back. You don't need a strap, but if you want one, good morning, Anne, they're wonderful because you're able to wrap them around the ball of your foot and then you can use the length of your arms and the strap to be able to lengthen your leg to the sky. If you don't have a yoga strap, of course you could use a house coat um, tie or you could use a tie or you could use of course a belt. So whatever you have or you can just use your arm and you can hold on to whatever you can take a hold of. In all likelihood that's what I'm going to be doing today. Um, last part of it, highly recommend that you either have a towel or a, a blanket that you can fold for a couple of reasons. One is it's great padding for your knees. If you have two yoga mats you're also welcome to double them up. Um, uh, this is really nice to prop under your sitting bones when you're sitting in a, in a sitting position so that you can let your pelvis rock forward and again get out of hanging out in those lower back ligaments, tendons and muscles so much. Good morning, Mary. And then um, it's also nice to just curl up with. So when you start your class and maybe you're not warmed up yet, it's so wonderful to have the, the blanket around you. So go ahead and we're gonna start on our back today. Good morning, Leslie. We're gonna start on our back today. So let me just check in on the time. We have a couple more minutes. Good morning, Anne. So go ahead and make your way onto your back. Good morning, Kim. Tuck your shoulder blades back underneath you to create some space opening in your chest. Make sure there's nothing pressing against your legs or your feet. Take your feet nice and wide. Let your toes drift out to the outsides of your yoga mat. Good morning, Julie. Roll open your shoulders, flip your palms to the sky. Give your chin a bit of a tuck so that your crown is in alignment with your neck which is in alignment with your spine and close down your eyes. Take a couple of deep breaths in through your nose and exhales through your mouth. If you're like me this morning, you probably feel like you're vibrating a little bit. So just try not to get, try not to press yourself to be in any particular state. Just meet yourself wherever you are this morning. Pardon me while I put my hair up. You're supposed to be laying on your back so you wouldn't be noticing. I'm in the middle of moving over here at my house. And uh, everywhere in my house, I have cards, cards that I give out at my retreats and my events and ones that I use to remind myself of things that are important. They are small messages from the universe. And today, as I was getting ready for the yoga class and I was pushing back my junk so there was a space for me to practice, this card fell on the floor. And the card says, I live in a friendly universe. And it says, let life befriend you today. Every hour on the hour throughout the day, remind yourself, I live in a friendly universe. 
Good morning, Dawn and Shelly. So if you're just joining us, please make your way onto your back in Shavasana. All the way back onto your back. Let your feet relax out. And start to deepen your breath. Moving your breath a little bit lower down. Soften your belly. And either keep your hands with your palms to the sky or bend your elbows and rest both of your palms over top of your belly. Relax your shoulders, keeping your eyes closed. And start to inhale your breath through your nose filling the space underneath your palms. Soften your forehead, releasing any wrinkles that you have in your forehead from focusing or concentrating. And see if you can balance out the length of your inhale with the length of your exhale. So breathing in through your nose, exhaling through your nose. Feeling your chest rise. Feeling your diaphragm rise. Feeling your belly rise. And feeling it fall as you exhale. Finding your own rhythm. three more cycles of breaths. Opening your eyes. Slide your legs together, bring your ankles all the way together. Flexing your toes, spreading each one of your toes apart. Press through the balls of your feet, pressing forward to the front of your mat and raise your arms up and over top of your head, interlacing your fingers and flipping your palms, pressing above your head, inhaling, letting your ribs rise, relaxing your arms and legs and exhale. Another deep breath in, pressing your legs forward, pressing through the balls of your feet, lifting through your rib cage, pressing through your palms, inhaling in, and exhaling as you relax. Relaxing your feet, just letting your toes fall to either side and bringing your hands back, bending your elbows and resting your palms over top your belly, closing your eyes, and sending yourself some love. Opening your eyes again, bending your feet, bending your knees, placing the soles of both your feet down on the mat, 
and inhaling your right knee into your chest, wrapping your right elbow around your shin, squeezing your knee into your chest, lengthening your lower back, Releasing your foot back to the mat, inhaling, bringing your left knee, wrapping your left forearm around your shin, squeezing in your shin, lengthening your lower back into the ground. And then inhaling your right knee in to meet your left, wrap both your hands around your shins, bringing your knees nice and wide, bringing your knees into your armpits, and rocking from side to side, breathing into the space between your knees. Holding onto your right knee, lengthening your left leg long all the way out to the ground. Flex your left foot and then bring your, left, your right knee across your body into a side twist all the way across, nice and gentle. And then stretch your right arm out to the side and either look up to the ceiling or create some increased stretch by taking a peek over your right shoulder. Doesn't need to be the biggest stretch that you've ever done. Just open up your side body, breathing deep into your right rib cage. Inhale your right knee back to center. Squeeze it in just a little bit more. Bend your left leg, place the sole of your foot on the ground and stretch your right heel up to the ceiling. Option to take a hold behind your right thigh or if you wanna go a little deeper, you can stretch your strap but I encourage you to just grab onto whatever you can grab onto. Good to keep your right knee bent, but flex your right foot and then press forward, point your toe. Back and forth, flex and point. Bring your toes towards your face and then press your toes towards the ceiling. Back and forth at your own pace. Three more. Then release your foot and make circles with your toes in one direction and then the other direction. Still your foot, flex your right foot, reach behind your right thigh a little bit more and gently draw your toes towards your face. Option to walk your hands up the back of your leg any amount, but keep your right shoulder, your left shoulder on the ground, head on the mat, Bend your elbows, draw your right toes towards your face just a little more. Keep your low back on the ground. Releasing your leg, bring your knee back into your armpit. Option to lengthen your left leg out to the mat and then take hold of your outer right foot with your right hand into half happy baby, stretching your sole of your foot towards the ceiling, bringing your right knee to your right armpit and gently drawing your knee into your armpit, armpit pressing your hand into your foot, your foot into your hand. Place your left hand on the front of your left thigh and then let your right foot and your right knee release open to the right hand side with your knee bent. So opening your leg to out to the right hand side and your right knee is tracking in alignment with your right armpit. No need to straighten your leg. Just open it up until it naturally resists using your hand to hold your leg. Inhale your right foot back to the center. 
Place your left hand on the outside of your right foot. Take your right hand out to the side and bring your knee and your foot across your body just a little bit. Keep your gaze to the ceiling. Keep your right knee nice and bent. No need to stretch out the back of your hamstring with much force. Breathing deep. Bringing your leg back to neutral. Place your right hand back up, bend your left knee, place it on the ground, and then take your right ankle on the top of your left shin or your left thigh for figure four and reach through, holding onto the back of your left thigh and gently draw your left knee towards your chest. Option to use your right elbow to gently open up your right knee. Flex both of your feet. Breathe deeply across your chest, opening up your collarbones, feeling the stretch all the way down your right thigh, your right outer leg, and even into your right glute. Draw your left knee a little closer. Open your right knee a little wider. And then release your left foot to the mat. Release your right foot to the mat and draw your left knee into your chest. On your next inhale, lengthen your left leg all the way to the sky. Option to take hold behind your left thigh. Flex your left foot. Draw your toes towards your face. Feel the stretch all the way down the back of the leg. And then press your toes, point your toes all the way towards the ceiling. And then back and forth. Bringing your toes to your face and then pointing your toes towards the ceiling. Wakening up all the tendons and the ligaments and the muscles in your leg, back and forth. Still your foot, starting to draw circles in clockwise fashion with your ankle. Release and back the other way. Still your foot. Grab hold up maybe a little bit higher up your leg and gently start to draw your toes towards your face. Keeping your shoulders on the ground. Option to walk your hands up your leg just a little more. Drawing it a little bit closer. And bend your knee, bringing it into your chest, lengthening your left leg or your right leg out and bringing your left foot and your left leg into a half happy baby. If it's too much to have your right leg extended, you can bend it. Take your left hand reaching up, taking hold of the outer side of your left foot and draw your left knee into your left armpit. Finding the resistance of your foot pressing into your hand, your hand foot pressing into your foot. Feeling the stretch all the way down the back of the left leg and maybe even the right thigh as you're pressing your right foot all the way towards the front of your mat. Placing your right hand on top of your right thigh. Allow your left foot to open up all the way to the left hand side, keeping your knee bent. Feeling a gentle opening all the way down the left thigh, the left groin, doing your best to keep your right thigh onto the ground. Inhaling your left leg back to center. Swapping your hands, placing your right hand on the outside of your left foot, drawing your left arm up to the side and allowing your left leg to draw across the body to the right hand side. Keeping your left knee nice and bent.
keeping your gaze neutral. Inhaling your leg back to center, bending your right knee and then placing your left ankle on top of your right thigh, reaching through for figure four, holding onto the back of your right thigh and drawing your right knee nice and close into your chest. Option to use your left elbow to gently press open your left knee. Don't mind me, there's some sort of construction going on outside. <laughs> Draw your knee in just a little closer. And then release your leg back to the mat. Bring both of your knees in. Inhale, bring your forehead to your knees, squeezing in, breathing deep. Releasing your head back to the mat, taking both of your hands behind the back of your shins and either rocking back and forth a few times on your spine. And making your way all the way through into hands and knees. Giving yourself lots of room, setting up, either putting a mat or a blanket underneath your knees if your knees are sensitive. Wrists are right underneath shoulders, knees are right underneath hips, going into cat and cow. Inhaling, releasing your belly to the mat, lifting your gaze forward, broadening through your collarbones. Exhaling, pressing into your hands, pressing into your knees, belly button to spine, chin to chest. Inhaling, releasing your hips all the way down, lifting your gaze, exhaling, pressing down. Lifting through your shoulder blades, back and forth between cat and cow, dropping your belly, lifting your gaze, inhaling, exhaling, pressing into your hands, belly button to spine, chin to chest. Back and forth at your own pace. Feeling the articulation of your spine back and forth as you move your breath through your belly, through your chest. Let the, let the motion be dynamic. Bending your elbows, waving up, looking forward, exhaling. Keep going. Maybe allowing your body to move back and forth. Let the movement be juicy. Close your eyes. Three more rounds. And two. And one. Still your, still your motion. Coming back to neutral. I want you to extend your back leg back behind you, flex your toes, lift your leg to hip height, inhale your right arm forward, thumb up, palm in, gaze down to the mat, center your hips to the mat, pressing back through your heel, reaching forward through your fingertips on the right. Bend your left knee, and reach back with your right hand all the way around, touch your foot, and then right hand back straight, press back through your heel to lengthen. Exhale, flex your left knee, reach back, tap your foot, and then inhale to press forward, back and forth. Find your length, keeping your thigh at hip height, back and forth. Sweeping your right hand behind, touching your foot for three, for two, and one. Releasing your hand down and your left leg. Press back through your right heel, lift your, your right leg to hip height, extend
Extend up through the left hand, reaching forward, palm in. Find the space, neutral spine. Reaching forward with your left hand, pressing back through your right heel. Starting to move, bend your right knee, reach back with your left hand, tap your foot, and then reach forward, press back. Keep going, sweeping your left hand around, keeping your right thigh at hip height for six, for five, for four, for three, for one. Release back down, open up your knees and reach back, releasing down into child's pose. Reach forward with your fingertips, releasing your head down to the mat. I want you to make this one dynamic by being up on your fingertips and reaching your fingertips forward, but pressing back your sitting bones. Breathing deeply into the space between your shoulder blades. Two more breaths. Lift up just a little bit, walk both of your hands as far as you can to the right hand side. Reach your left hand just a little more forward. Release your pelvis back to your heels. Release your head to the mat or between your biceps. Making sure your left sitting bone is in contact with your left heel, reaching forward with your left fingertips, feeling the stretch all the way down the left side of the body. Walking your hands back to neutral and then walking your hands all the way to the left hand side, reaching forward with your right fingertips just a little more, sitting back onto your heels, feeling your right sitting bone in touch with your right heel and feeling the stretch all the way from the right fingertips, all the way down to the waist. Walking your hands back to neutral, coming back into a nice passive child's pose, forehead all the way to the mat, Releasing your hands forward or walking them back behind you on either side of your body, palms facing the ceiling. This is child's pose. You never have to wait for me to cue it. This is your rest pose, the place that you can go in your yoga practice as you would like when you want for however long that you want. If your knees are together and your feet are together and you release down, you will feel the stretch in the opening between your shoulder blades. If you bring your knees nice and wide and you keep your ankles together, your belly can rest in between your knees and you will feel the opening into your pelvis. Waving forward back into hands and knees, tuck your toes and lift your hips to the sky, coming back into downward facing dog. So taking a peek forward, making sure your hands are nice and wide, all of your fingers are separate, you feel your wrists are parallel with the top edge of the mat. Look back behind you, feet are hip distance apart. Bend your knees. Starting to walk your dog, lengthen one heel towards the ground, bend your other knee, and then switch. Other heel to the ground, straight leg, bend the other knee. Walking your dog back and forth. Release your head between your biceps and bend your knees just enough so that you feel like you are one long line from your fingertips all the way to your sitting bones. Finding your down dog with the body that you have today. And if you're a hyperextender through your elbows, put a slight bend in your elbows and feel the sensation that you are spinning your upper arms externally. So you're opening them up, broadening through the collarbone, feeling the space between your shoulder blades. Starting to wave forward, take a look forward, come forward into plank, rolling forward onto your toes, pressing forward, back through your heels in one long line all the way to your crown. And if this is too much for you right off the bat, I want you to release your knees to the mat into a modified plank. Otherwise, lift your knees, feel yourself in plank, engaging your abdomen, pulling your belly button to your spine, lifting your kneecaps, contracting the muscles in the front of your thigh, 
and slightly doming through your shoulder blades. Bending your hips back, exhaling back into downward facing dog, bending your knees nice and juicy, chest all the way towards your knees. And as soon as you get there, hinging forward back into plank. Exhale all the way back into down dog. Keep going back and forth at your own pace. Opening up your wrists, letting your body know that you're weight bearing. Keep going. For five, all the way back. For four, nice deep breath, bend your knees. For three, take a break at any time. For two, and all the way back, holding downward facing dog. This time, come all the way forward into plank, release your knees to the mat, untuck your toes, and lower down in one long line all the way to your belly. Take your feet hip distance apart, top to your feet flush with the mat, making sure that your blocks or whatever your props are towards the front edge of your mat. Place your hands all the way out to the outside of your yoga mat, nice and wide. Inhale, exhale, press down into your hands, down into the tops of your feet and wave your body forward, broadening through the collarbones, shoulder blades, rolling down your back. Exhale all the way down, forehead to ground. Inhale, press down, lift up. Use the strength of your back body to wave your upper body up. No crunching in your lower back. Gaze looking forward. Exhale all the way down. This time, coming a little higher, press down a little more firmly into your hands. Inhale, exhale, press down, lift up. Releasing your shoulder blades down your back, creating lots of space between your ears and your shoulders. Exhale all the way down, tuck your toes, hand beside your shoulders, press up into hands and knees. Exhale, lift, downward facing dog. Inhale, looking forward, walking your feet all the way towards your hands, coming into a forward fold. Take your feet hip distance apart, hands to block or hands to ground, bend your knees. Bend your knees enough that you are feeling no tension into your lower back. Your chest might be actually just resting on top of your thighs. Release the back of your head, no wrinkles down the back of your head, crown reaching to ground, sitting bones starting to lift towards the sky. Slowly walking your hands all the way up the fronts of your legs, rolling up into a standing position. Head is the last to rise. And when you get to the top, inhaling both of your arms up and to the side, all the way up. Look up, hands together. Exhale, hands to heart center. Close your eyes. Pressing the palms of your hands together, opening up your collarbones. Your crown's reaching to the sky. Feeling all four corners of your feet, the inner and the outer heel. Small toe mound, big toe mound. Lifting through your inner arches. Feeling the strength of your inner thighs, lifting your kneecaps, your tailbone tucking gently towards the ground. Feeling your heart beating into, the, into your thumbs. Releasing your hands down, sweeping them up, looking up, inhaling, exhaling to fold, all the way to forward fold. Inhale to halfway lift, hands to the front of your shins or to blocks. Bend your knees, gaze two feet in front of your body, one long line from the tip of your crown all the way to your tailbone. Exhale to fold. Inhale, reverse one, arms up, reach up. Look up, exhale to fold all the way down. Releasing your hands, crown to the mat. Inhale to halfway lift. Exhale to fold, let it be deliberate. Inhale. Reach up, look up, exhale to fold. Find your dance, pair it with your breath. Inhale to halfway lift, exhale to fold, keep going. 
Inhale, reach up, look up. Exhale to fold, stay in forward fold. Reaching for opposite elbows, keeping your knees nice and bent, releasing your crown towards the ground. Finding your toes, and then rocking back, finding your heels, opening up any amount, finding space. Releasing your hands to the mat, lifting the halfway lift, exhaling, place both your hands down, reach back with your right foot to the back of your mat, release your right knee to the mat, untuck your toes, place your right hand inside your left leg, and inhale your left arm up to the sky. Twisting to the left, looking up, reaching up through the left fingertips, pressing down with the right hand, Exhale, bring your left hand down, walking your left foot out to the left, coming into lizard, place your left hand inside your left foot, and reaching forward with the crown of your head, and maybe even walking your knee, your right knee back a little bit more, releasing down into your right thigh, possibly even releasing your forearms down to the mat, keeping your left knee, the inside of your left knee, in contact with your left shoulder. Option to rock from side to side. And this is where blocks can be especially handy because sometimes we can go further than being on our hands, but being down on our fingertips is too much. Releasing back and forth, opening up. Just breathing deep through our back body. If you're on blocks, moving your blocks from side to, to each side. Walking your left foot in, taking your left hand on the outside of your left leg, tucking your right toe, stepping back to plank, releasing your knees to the mat, untuck your toes, come down in one long line. Pressing into your feet, hands beside your face, inhaling, pressing down, lifting up into baby cobra. Exhale all the way down. Pressing back through tabletop, lifting to downward facing dog. Inhaling your right leg up, exhaling right foot to right hand, release your left knee down onto the mat. Untuck your toes, place your left hand inside your right foot and inhale your right arm up and over top. Twisting to the right. Pressing into your left palm, reaching up with your right fingertips. One more deep breath. Exhale, bring your right hand down. Walk your right foot out to the side. Place your right hand inside your right foot. Your inside of your right knee is in contact with your right shoulder. And possibly even just walk your left leg back a bit. And either stay here for lizard or release your forearms down onto blocks or all the way down onto the mat. Find your length. Opening up all the way through the right groin, the right psoas muscle. Feeling the hip flexor opening. Option to rock from side to side. Coming to stand up, move the blocks from side to side. Walk your right foot in between, hand on either side. Tuck your left toes under, spring forward to the front of your mat into halfway lift. Exhale to fold, inhale, reverse swan. Rise all the way up, look up. Hands together, exhale to fold. Inhale to halfway lift, exhale, hands down, step back with the left foot. Keeping your, option to keep your left knee off the ground, or if you prefer to have it down, that's an option as well. Coming up, if you're on your toes, you're in a low lunge. Place your left foot, your left hand inside your right foot. Inhale, your right hand up. Reaching up, pressing back through the left heel, left leg straight, right knee at 90 degrees. Placing your right hand down, walking your right foot out to the side. And opening up to the side, place your right hand on the inside of your right knee. Rock onto the outside edge of your right foot and press away, rotating up to the side. You can do this even if you're on your left knee. Okay. 
Releasing back, walking your right foot in, place both hands down, pressing back to plank, releasing your knees to the mat, all the way down in one long line. Inhaling, pressing down into cobra, lifting up, looking forward, exhale all the way back down, through hands and knees and lifting to downward facing dog. Inhale your left leg up, exhale left foot through the left hand, coming into a low lunge, placing your right hand down, inhaling your left arm up. Making sure you're stacking your left shoulder over top of your right, over top of your hand. Open up your fingers, reaching up through your left hand, pressing back through your right heel. One more breath. Placing your left hand down, walking your left foot out, placing your left hand inside your left foot, rocking your foot, your left foot out to the outside edge. Placing your left tongue on the inside of your left knee and gently opening your body up to the left hand side. Making sure you're aware of where your head is in space. One more breath. Releasing your left hand, walk your left foot in, hands on either side of your foot, springing forward to the front of your mat to halfway lift. Exhale to fold. Inhale, reverse one, all the way up. Look up, hands together, exhale to fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, both hands down, stepping back to plank. Option to release your knees, going down in one long line into cobra, or staying in plank, tipping forward on your tippy toes, releasing down through chaturanga, flipping your feet, and coming up with the upward facing dog. Exhaling. Everyone leaning back and downward facing dog. It's your option whenever we're doing vinyasas in yoga to skip the vinyasa, to come and meet in downward facing dog or to modify it. Coming down with your knees on the ground, one long line and coming up into cobra or taking the full chaturanga and coming to upward facing dog. Inhale your right leg back, placing your right hip on top of your left, bend your right knee, lifting your right knee to the sky, pressing back with your left heel, rising with your right knee. Inhale your right leg straight, exhale right foot through the right hand, spin your back heel down 190 for warrior two. Inhale your left arm up, over and back, Place your right arm forward for warrior two. And if your arms start to get tired, just release your, your hands to your hips. Take a peek down and make sure that your warrior foundation is the way that you need it to be. So nice and wide, your left leg is straight. You're on a 90 degree angle or something very close to it on your back leg. Your right knee is as close to 90 degrees as you can get it, but more importantly, your right knee is tracking forward with your right toes. When you're ready, opening your arms up to the side and then taking your gaze over your right fingertips. Making sure your body, your head, is over your shoulders, over your hips. Going a little deeper. Release down a little bit more. Reverse your warrior, flip your right hand, reach back with your right fingertips. Pressing forward into your right knee, feeling the stretch all the way from the right fingertips to the right pelvis. Inhaling back to warrior two, exhaling, coming into side angle. So either place your elbow on the in on your right thigh or reach down to a block of the ground and inhale your right arm up and over top of your head. Option to spin your gaze under your left arm. And whatever position you're in, making sure you're not dumping into your right leg, but you're using the strength of your legs to lift your body up on its own. One more breath. Inhale to warrior two. Legs are the same on both sides. Straighten your right leg, hinging forward. Reaching forward with your right hand when you go as far as you can go, releasing your right arm down into triangle. So either to your right shin, your right ankle, or to a block. And then spin your left arm straight up to the sky. 
Option to look down to the ground or spin your gaze to the ceiling. Both legs are straight. One more breath. Inhaling as you come up, bending your right knee into warrior two. Exhale, spinning your left arm all the way down on either side of your right foot. Inhale into three-legged dog. All the way back and up. Exhale, right foot down into downward facing dog. Inhale, coming all the way to plank, going through your vinyasa, down, upper dog or cobra. Exhale to downward facing dog. Inhale, your left leg up, stack your left hip on top of your right. Lift your left knee to the ceiling. Upper body square to the front of the mat. Pressing back into your right heel, lifting your left knee even higher. Inhale, straighten your right or your left leg. Exhale, left foot through the left hand. Spin your back heel down on a 90 degree angle. Inhale, your right arm up, over, and back. Finding your posture. And when you're ready, opening your arms up to the sides. So this is an open hip posture, so you should feel your hips opening to the right side of your mat. Natural alignment is to have your left heel in alignment with your right arch. But we're all different, so find what works for you. Go a little deeper, breathing deep, and reverse your warrior. Flip your left palm up and back, reaching back with your left fingertips, looking up, Inhale back to warrior two. Exhale, bending your left elbow, bringing it to your left thigh or reaching all the way down to a block or the ground and inhaling your right arm up and over top of your head. Finding the length all the way from your left, your right outer foot, all the way to your right fingertips. Option to look down to the ground or spin your gaze up. Two more breaths. Feel the strength of your legs. Keep your lower body the same and inhaling your back to warrior two. Straighten your left leg, hinging forward with your body, reaching forward with your left fingertips. When you get as far as you can go, releasing your left hand to your shin or to the ground or to a block. Right arm reaching to the sky in triangle. Feeling the outer right foot pressing into the mat. Feeling the ball of your left foot. Reaching up, one more breath. Bending your left knee, coming back up into warrior two, and then spinning both arms down, pressing back into three-legged dog. Left leg down, come forward into plank, and go through your vinyasa. Taking your time and meeting back in downward facing dog for three breaths. If you're in child's pose, come back into downward facing dog. Shorten your down dog by taking a big wide-legged step, your right foot out to the right side of your mat, and the left foot out to the left side of the mat. Press and back like you're in a shortened downward facing dog. And inhale your right arm underneath your body, holding on to the outside of your left calf, your left foot, your left knee. Pressing forward with your left hand, still reaching your hips to the sky, an option to look underneath your left arm. Feeling the twist, finding the expansion and the grounding at the same time. Opening up through your shoulder blades, using the leverage of your outer left calf to open up your shoulders. Release your right hand back to the mat. Inhale your left arm across your body, holding onto the outside of your right shin. Pressing back with your right hand, 
Option to look underneath your right arm. Feeling like your hips are still rising to the sky, but finding the space between your shoulder blades. For two more breaths. Release your left hand back, walk your feet in. And looking back behind you, starting to walk your hands towards your feet. And when you get to the back of your mat, walk your toes out, your heels in, and bend your legs all the way down until you're sitting in a squat. So option if you're in a squat, when you're in a squat, if it's available to you, go nice and wide. And if your feet can go to the ground, that's great. And if not, that's fine too. You can either be up on your toes and working your heels towards the ground, or if it doesn't feel comfortable at all, then just place a block behind you to sit on. Wherever you are, by knots of space, so opening up, releasing your pelvis to the ground, drawing your crown towards the ceiling, placing both your elbows on the inside of your knees. Press your knees into your hands, your hands into your knees, your elbows into your knees. Broadening through your collarbone, finding the space across your chest. Release your right hand to the mat, press down into your right hand. Inhale your left arm up and over top of your head. Press down with your right hand, reach up with your left hand. Looking up. Exhale your left hand down, place your left hand inside your left knee and spin your right arm up and over top of your head. Find the length. Feel the strength of your left elbow pressing into your left knee. Finding the opening in your pelvis. Exhale your right hand down. So going into crow, if crow is in your practice, crow is an inversion. It, it also obviously involves some strength and stability, but it is a great prep pose for a lot of the different postures that we do. So setting up for crow, coming back, I just turned sideways, it's a little bit easier, placing both your hands in front of you, shoulder distance apart. Keep walking your feet, so they're about four inches apart, coming onto your toes and lifting your hips up. If you can't get distance coming up or height, you'll find it really difficult. So looking forward, don't look down, look forward. Pick your hips up, place your knees on the upper part of your biceps, from the back of your triceps or into your armpits, rocking forward into your hands, and just feeling the height and the lift of pressing into your hands and lifting up to your hips, lifting up to your shoulder blades, looking forward, an option, to take one foot off the ground and maybe even the other. Keep going. Releasing back down, hips down. Let's do it one more time. So if you're feeling rocky about it, don't take your feet off the ground. But if this is it's always good, let me just tell you a little story for a second. In yoga for years, I never wanted to do a headstand or a handstand because I told myself as a chiropractor that was dangerous, but the truth was I was scared, which I totally get. It seems unnatural to go upside down, but the truth is, is that we are capable. And when I was in class and I was about 40, uh, a 65 year old goddess of a woman beside me hopped up into a headstand and right then and there, I knew that it was a story that I had for myself. So I'm saying that, not to shame you, I'm saying that to encourage you. We are so much stronger than we give ourselves credit for, but you have to start where you're at. So doing some of these postures where you're close to the ground so that there's no real concern about falling and we get to practice. And what's wonderful about this is I can't see you and neither can anybody else. So although I can't help you specifically, we're on our own. So let's try it one more time. If it feels more comfortable for you, go ahead and place your blanket or your towel in front of you. Push your hands back up, reach up, lift your hips, bend your elbows a bit, rock your knees onto the upper part of your biceps, onto your triceps or into your armpits, and lean forward, looking up, reaching up through your back body. Option 
to bring one heel up then the other or keep them both down. One more breath. And then release your feet down, release your hips down, move whatever block or blanket you have, and then inhale, release your hips up to the ceiling, head back down. Walk your hands back down so that you're in downward facing dog. Look forward and then walk or hop all the way to the front of your mat. Inhale the halfway lift. Exhale to fold. Inhale, reach up, look up. Exhale, hands to heart center. Inhale, arms up, hands together. Exhale, hands to heart center. This time sitting back into a chair. So being in chair pose, I want you to lift your hips up or lift your chest up and sit back into your heels, lowering your seat closer to the ground, looking down at your toes, making sure that you can see both of your toes. And either your feet are together and your knees are together, or your feet are hip distance apart and your knees are hip distance apart. So whatever's more comfortable for you, sitting back, looking forward, go a little deeper, feeling the shake, Making sure that your head is above your hips and you're not falling forward. Inhale, straighten your legs, reach your hands up, look up. Hands through heart center, sitting back into chair one more time. This time getting all the way back, sitting back on your heels and twisting to the right by placing your left elbow on the outside of your right thigh, pressing into your knee. Pressing your palms together, revolving open to the right hand side. Three breaths, keep your hips low. Feel the tension and the power of your legs. One more breath. Coming back to center, press down into your feet, lift up, hands up, look up. Exhale, hands to heart center, sitting back into chair one more time. Finding the depth. Inhaling and exhaling, twisting to your left, right elbow on the outside of your left thigh. Press into your outer left leg, palms together, spinning your body open up to the left. Your palms coming towards your chest for two more breaths. You got it. Releasing the pose, lengthening your legs, reaching back up, looking up, exhaling, hands to heart center, reaching forward into forward fold. Placing the palm of your hand underneath the sole of your right foot, walking your, your wrist all the way to your toes, stepping your foot onto your hand, and doing the same with your other foot. So feeling your palms pressing into the soles of your feet. Bend your knees, lifting your sitting bones, releasing your head to the mat. Two more breaths. Releasing your hands, inhaling to halfway lift, exhaling to fold, inhale all the way, rise up, reach up, exhale, hands to heart center, coming back all the way down, lifting your right leg, figure fouring your right leg over top of your left, and then pressing back, sitting down, so either having your hands at heart center or just placing them softly onto your legs. Flexing your right foot, pressing back, sitting down deep into your left leg. Lifting your chest up, feeling the strength, feeling the balance, you got this. Five, for four, opening your right knee, for two, Press down into your left leg, releasing your right leg. Inhale your arms up, look up, 
Forward fold all the way down. Inhale into halfway lift. Exhale into fold. Reverse on. Arms all the way up. Reach up. Look up. Palms together, sitting back into a chair, lifting your left leg, placing your left ankle over top of your right thigh, sitting back into a figure four. Go a little deeper. Feel like you're sitting back into a chair, so you're not rounding through the lower body, through your lower back, you're pressing back. You're in a one-legged squat. Lift your chest forward. Make sure that you have lots of room to breathe. Three more breaths. Open up your left knee just a little more. Last breath. Press down into your right leg, release your left leg. Inhale all the way up. Exhale to fold all the way down. Inhale the halfway lift. Exhale, hands down, step back with both your feet. Coming into your last flow. Inhaling forward, chaturanga or reaching down through. Inhaling to upward facing dog or into cobra. Exhaling back into downward facing dog. Release your knees to the mat, coming back into child's pose. Finding your preferred position for, for your child's pose. If your shoulders are a little sore or tight, walking your hands back behind you on either side of your body. Forehead to the mat. Four more breaths. Walking your hands forward, coming back into downward facing dog, lifting your hips to the sky, looking forward and walking or hopping to the front of your mat. Inhale to halfway lift, exhale to fold. Inhale, sweep your arms up all the way up, and hands to heart center. Coming in to tree pose. Placing your feet hip distance apart, press firmly down into your left leg, bend your right knee, open it to the side, and either keep your toes on the ground with your ankle into your left shin, or bring your foot up to your shin or above your knee. Press your right sole of your foot into your left inner thigh. <laughs> Meet yourself where you're at today. However wobbly that is, place your hands on your hips. Feel the strength of your left foot pressing into the ground. The engagement all the way up your body, reaching up with your crown. Then feel the strength, the resistance of your right foot pressing firmly into your right thigh, your left thigh. Inhaling your hands to heart center. An option to stay here with your gaze a few feet in front of your body on the ground and or to lift your hands, rising them up, and lift your gaze any amount, relaxing your shoulders. Just feeling the strength of your left leg. Breathing deeply into your chest. Bring your hands back to heart center. Release your right foot from your left leg and bring your knee forward. And then press forward with your right heel towards the front of the room. Raise your right leg a little bit higher, standing nice and tall in your left leg for three, for two, a little higher, for one, releasing your right foot down. Inhale your arms up, look up. 
Exhale, hands to heart center, pressing down into your right foot, finding your tree on the left hand side. When you're ready, bring your left leg to your thigh or your shin. Find the balance in your pelvis. Your hips are squaring to the front of your mat. And when you're ready, bringing your hands to heart center. Finding your strength. Finding your breath. Finding your stability. Option to inhale your arms up and over top of your head, reaching through your fingertips, releasing down through the shoulders. Option to look forward or to raise your eyes to the ceiling. One more breath. Bring your hands back to heart center. Press your palms firmly together, broadening through your collarbones. Release your left foot from your thigh. Spin your knee forward and then press your heel forward. Lift your leg a little higher for three. Lift up to your crown for two, a little higher for one and release your left leg down. Bend your knees, reach up. Exhale, forward fold all the way down. Inhale the halfway lift. Exhale, hands down, step back to downward facing dog. Going into pigeon. Inhale your right leg back. Exhale, bring your right knee through to your right hand. Walk your left leg back any amount, untuck your toes. Making sure that your right knee is outside of the line of your hip. Square your hips to the front of the mat. Walk your hands back. Find the length through your crown, broadening through your collarbones, looking forward. And when you're ready, start to gently and slowly walk your hands forward any amount. Option to bring your forearms to the mat or place a mat, sorry, a mat, a block, a blanket down in front of you to release yourself all the way down. If this is uncomfortable for you, your knees are not impressed, <laughs> you can roll onto your back and go into figure four. So right ankle on top of your left thigh and either option to stay with your left foot on the mat, gently pressing your right knee away, or you can reach through holding onto the back of your left thigh and drawing your knee closer. Whatever version you're in, for five more breaths. Pigeon is one of those postures where it's really easy to zone out. But I encourage you to just find, be a little playful with pigeon. Maybe just move your hips a little bit. See if you can find a little more depth. Find a little bit more space. A little more forgiveness. Breathing deeply into your back body. When you're ready, start to walk your hands back. If you're in figure four, just release your leg to the mat and continue to lie on your back. Inch your right knee in a little bit more, tuck your left toes and press back into downward facing dog. Pedaling out your hips in any amount. Feeling the strength of your hands pressing into the ground, lifting your hips back into your best version of downward facing dog. And when you're ready, inhaling your left leg up, exhale, left knee through your left wrist. Stepping your right hip back any amount, walking your foot back and finding the length first. 
And then when you're ready, coming down into pigeon. If you're in figure four, you've swapped out and you're now on the other side. If you have a block or you have a nice rolled up blanket and you feel like your left hip is way up in outer space, option to take a block or a rolled up blanket and just prop it up under your sitting bone. I always encourage you to just try something new and see how it feels. Maybe you get to experience a different part of pigeon. Maybe it opens up a bit more. More breaths. If you're in figure four, just release the pose and continue to lie on your back. Otherwise, if you're in pigeon, walk your hands back on either side of your left knee, tuck your right toes, press into your hands and lift your left leg back into downward facing dog. Pedaling your dog, finding your length, noticing the difference in your downward facing dog. Notice how much more freely you breathe. Notice how, notice how much more space you have. Releasing your heels to the mat, lift your sitting bones to the sky, press firmly into both your hands. Take a deep breath in and exhale through your mouth. Looking forward, walking both of your feet forward and coming to lie on your back. Rolling all the way back onto your back, bring your knees with you. If you're on your back already, bring your knees in. Reaching around, taking hold of the front of your shins, knees all the way into your chest, rocking from side to side. We're gonna do one bridge. And if you prefer to skip it, you can just stay right here on your back. Or if you have wheel in your practice, I'm not gonna cue it because we're on video, but I'm gonna allow you to go into to wheel if that's your preference. If you're coming into bridge, I want you to place both of your feet down, heels close to your sitting bones, heels hip distance apart. Place your hands on either side of your body, inhale, Exhale, press down into your feet, lift your hips. Option to interlace your hands underneath your back body, rolling onto one shoulder, tucking your shoulder blade under, rolling onto the other, tucking it under. Pressing down into your feet, lift your hips a little higher. Feeling the strength of your legs. Feeling your chest rise up towards your chin. For two more breaths, press a little deeper, lift a little higher, feel the strength of your legs, and exhale, releasing your hands, untucking, and gently rolling down one vertebrae at a time. Release your feet to the outside edges of your mat, and let your knees knock in, and just close your eyes for a moment. When you're ready, draw both your knees back into your chest. Inhale your forehead all the way up to your knees, squeezing in, drawing your knees a little closer to your chest, your forehead a little closer to your knees, holding onto your right knee, extending your left leg long. Option to keep your head up close to your knee or release it back down to the mat. And when you're ready, Switching legs, bringing your left knee in, pressing your right leg long, going back and forth, pressing out through your heels, feeling the strength of your legs, feeling your core, 
for six, press forward for five, your, your head can be on the ground for four, for three, for two, for one. Releasing your head back down, bend both your knees, place both of your soles on the ground. Inhale your left knee up over top of your right. Inhale both knees up to your chest and then release both your knees all the way to the right side of your body. Big twist to the right and release your left hand out to the side, palm down. An option to continue to look up towards the ceiling or spin your gaze over to the left hand side. And if it's too much having your left knee over your right, just stack your knees with your knees bent to the right hand side. Shouldn't be feeling pain or pinching in your lower back. So if it is, modify the twist. Breathing deeply into the left rib cage. Option to use a block underneath your knees on the right hand side. Inhale your knees back to center. Unwind your legs. Place your legs down on either side. I'm going to go into one rolling bridge. So set your feet up for bridge. Place your hands on either side. Inhale. Exhale. Press down into your feet. Lift your hips. Go a little higher. Then exhale all the way back down. Place your right knee over top of your left. Inhale. Both knees to your chest. Exhale, let your hips and your knees fall all the way to the left hand side. Open up your right arm to the right, arm at shoulder distance or shoulder height, palm down. An option to look to the sky or start to drift your gaze over to the right hand side. Breathing deep. Inhale, bring your knees back to center. Unwind your legs, place them back down, setting up for a rolling bridge. So taking your heels to hip distance, hands down. Inhale, exhale, press down, lift your hips all the way up. Press down a little further, lift a little higher, then exhale, release them all the way back down. Both knees in. Option to place your hands through for, for happy baby. Hands on the outside of your feet, knees drawing into your armpits, an option to rock from side to side. Take your knees nice and wide, drawing your pelvis down to the ground and bringing your knees as close as you can to your armpits. I'm trying to keep your knees bent to 90 degrees as well as your ankles. When you're ready, releasing your knees and doing whatever you would like to do for your last 20 or 30 seconds. Option to place a block underneath your pelvis and raising your legs up to the sky. Viparita Karani, one of the most relaxing postures that you can do. If you have nice something nice and solid, you can do that. Otherwise, release all the way back. Place your feet as the distance of your mat on the right and left. Tuck your shoulder blades under just a bit. Tuck your chin so that your crown is reaching forward and your spine is aligned. Releasing your arms out to the side. Spinning open your palms. Release your breath. Ask 
in the quietness of your body. Feel how the vibration is so calm. Feel the earth support your body as you drop more firmly into your mat. I'm going to read a poem called The Mystery of She, what was sent to me by one of my friends. I would love to tell you what book it's from. I can't remember. <laughs> it's called The Mystery of She. Her heart was connected to the flowers. As they opened, so did she. Her voice was connected to the birds. As they sang, so did she. Her wisdom was connected to the trees. And as they whispered, so did she. Her womb was connected to the moon, and as it waxed and waned, so did she. Her attachments were connected to the tides, and as they let go, so did she. Her passions were connected to the fire, as it was stoked, so was she. Her eyes were connected to the entire sky, as it saw clearly, so did she. Her emotions were connected to the rivers, and as they flowed, so did she. Her spirit was connected to the stars. As they shone, so did she. Her soul was connected to the entire universe. And as it expanded, so did she. One more deep breath. Starting to move your hands, your wrists, your fingers. Rolling your ankles, moving your toes. An option to stay in your Shavasana or draw your legs close together, pressing out through your towel, toes, raising your arms up over your head, reaching up any amount, pressing through your feet, and then softening and exhaling. When you're ready, drawing both your knees into your chest, rolling onto your right hand side, drawing your knees nice and close. Taking a couple deep breaths. And when you're ready, pressing into your left palm, keeping your eyes closed, come to find a seat on your mat. Releasing your palms into your lap where you're most comfortable, keeping your eyes closed. With your eyes closed, rising your arms up on either side, reaching them up over top of your head, Feeling the energy going from one palm to the other. Option to look up. Exhale, place your palms together, bring them down to the center of your body, to your heart center. Bow your head. Feel your heart. Feel your calm. Notice how you feel. Bowing your head even further. From my heart to yours, namaste. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> I 
I'm sorry, I went a couple of minutes over. I really like to respect your time, so I'm sorry about that. You are so welcome. Thank you everybody for joining me today. Yeah, you're welcome, Julie. You're welcome, Kathy and Leslie, namaste. You're welcome, Jen. You're welcome, Kim, Mike. So nice to have you here every week. And Kristen and Leah, you're welcome. I love our little community. And I will probably be back in early next week. Jenny, thank you for the poem. Book name later for sure, I'll private message you. And thank you, Lee, if you're on here or you're in listening to it later for sending me the poem. You're welcome, Anne. Mwah. Have a magical day. If you live where we live here in Toronto area, the sun is shining and that's a beautiful thing. You're welcome. Goodbye, everybody. Have an amazing day. You're welcome, Nancy. So nice to have you.